What's up then mates, how's it going? I'm getting very excited today because it's a definite go ahead. We definitely are leaving for, look at my glasses. I've got one arm glasses, you saw my other video, but I'm off to the opticians tomorrow to get it sorted. But at the moment, you've just got to bear with me because there might be a bit on the, the twist. The trip that we've been planning for the last eight or nine months, we originally had it booked with the bike shuttle to take our bikes down to Toulouse. We had flights booked to fly down to Toulouse. That was obviously cancelled. But now we are catching a ferry on Wednesday morning to head off down to Bilbao, Spain, and then right up through the Pyrenees, through France via Bordeaux, and then head back up. It's about 10 day, well, it's gonna be 12 days, including ferry, ferry travel, but 10 days of riding. My tires that I've got on the bike right now are actually, they're actually fine. They've probably got another thousand miles, maybe 1500 miles left in them. But we all know that that's not gonna be enough when I'm on those Pyrenees mountain passes. So I've got a brand new set of Bridgestone A41s. I'm gonna quickly whip the wheels off. I'm gonna use the Skylift this time. I've shown you the Skylift in previous videos. I'll stick more links up here, down there, wherever you wanna see them. Just gonna quickly whip them off, get them down, get them back on again. Just the last couple of minutes. Here we go. So if you can take your wheels off yourself and you're going to undo them, make sure you do not lift up the, the bike straight away because you need the, the front wheel to be on the ground so you can undo the bolts at the front. Okay, so previously, I've never ever taken this part off previously because I've never needed to, but maybe the uh, acro pipe sitting a bit further in towards the wheel. I'm not even gonna take that off when I put the, the new tire back on, when I put the wheel back on again. I'm just gonna slide it up from underneath just by jacking the bike up a little bit higher so the rear wheel gets a bit further off the ground and you can slide it in underneath. But other than that, you really should take the, just undo those three bolts on the back here. By undoing those, that comes off. It just makes it a lot easier to access. But I've done this quite a few times now. Right, let's get them down to the garage and get the tires changed. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, here we are at Straight and Fields Over Tea Station, and uh, it's my good friend Mark here who owns this fantastic establishment who uh, has agreed to do my tyres for me. So it really does save a lot of time by taking the wheels off yourself. If you've got a sky lift, jack your bike up, take the wheels off, take them down to your local tyre fitter centre, someone who is happy to agree to change the tyres for you for practically next to nothing. So what I'll do is throw in five pound a, five pound a wheel, plus a little bit extra on top. And on that note, it's actually a shame we can't use guys like this for all our servicing because ultimately all we want to have is the, the BMW stamp. Excuse my, my flipping glasses. All we want is that BMW stamp inside our service book. Whereas really these guys can probably do a better job than what BMW can themselves. Now I say this based on a very, very recent experience where I took my bike in for its 12,000 mile service. 12,000 was 8,000, 8,000, I think it's 8,000. It came back with a bolt missing on one of the crash bars. And then after a further closer inspection, I discovered that the, all the wiring for my Denali lights had been rerouted around all the crash bars. So it all looks pretty ugly and messy. So I've got to spend another couple of hours taking the, all the fairing panels apart, taking off the crash bars and rerouting those wires so it doesn't look completely messy. Because obviously my bike is, uh, is an example for Denali products. So anyway, my tyre should be nearly done, so let's go back in there and have a look. What's going on? It's pretty genius, though. There's only about two or three mil clearance, isn't there? Yeah, and then your wheel brings out of shape, it just moves up and down and backwards and forwards with it. It's... All right. So he's just telling me that I'm going to relight this machine because it doesn't touch the, the actual rim. It's got a sensor on it that actually stops it from touching the rim, so no fear of uh, marking anything on the rim. I'd like to help where I can. <laughs> <laughs> Equal effort and all that. Well, so you don't need to put any weights on that no, one at all? No, and that's, that's what you get with decent tyres, you'll get that every time. As long as you haven't curved the wheel, uh, it'll be zero every time. There you go, you can take that Great. one away. There's one. Away. You got it? Yep. Yeah. So did you hear that? We're in terms of tyres. This is your bike, good quality tyres. I've got Bridgestones here. Didn't even need any weights on it to, for the balancing. So there we are, all done. There we go, all done, ready to go to Spain and France. Let's pay the man some money. So the only downside to doing it this way is that I have to get rid of the old tires, but the, the, these can still be used. These tires have actually got loads and loads of wear still left on them. So I'll probably fit these back on. And the front's not looking that great actually, but there's absolutely loads on the rear tire, loads. So when I get back, I expect my tyres to be completely shredded from a good ride. And we are back. That didn't take long, did it? Doesn't matter which one you put on first because obviously we've got the, the bike on the lift. It's the back end strapped down, so it doesn't matter too much about putting the front on first. Don't worry about you applying more weight to the front because the the, the sky lift is holding it all in place. So all I'm going to do, the first thing though, we're going to do before we start putting it back together is <clears throat> bring the axle down to the same similar height to where the axle is on the wheel. So we don't, we don't have to lift the wheel up in the air because it's, it's quite a heavy thing, isn't it? We want to make this as easy as possible. So I'm going to start with that right now. So just put the wheel uh, alongside it and then I'm just going to gradually loosen off the, the gas inside the chamber on the sky lift. Right, and the next thing you want to be very wary of here is if you look at this, those with a trained eye can see this is completely wrong because remember the ABS sensor down here? Well, that has to be this way around here, working with this metal disc here on the inside of the wheel. Bring that a bit closer, but you should have on your bike, if it's got ABS, you'll have this, this disc just there and it's not on that side. It's only on this side. So that has to go on this side. And I have seen someone put this wheel on I'm not going to mention any names, but someone who I know quite intimately. 
And we've got we've got some stories, haven't we, mate? Anyway, he actually managed to get it on the wrong way around. I can't remember what the faults he has. He had, he had numerous faults popping up all over his dash, and things weren't working properly. It's it it quite bad. And then when I looked at it, I thought, you got it on the wrong way around, mate. So as you can see, I've just got my calipers resting very loosely at the side. So a lot of people like to get cable ties and zip them up to parts of the frame. As long as you're careful, uh, you know, I'm, I'm quite happy to do it this way. I'm just very, very careful when I do it. So just gonna push them, pull them to one side so the wheel can get through and slowly roll it back. The calipers are tapping against the spokes, but nothing, Nothing major, and as you can see, the bike still needs to come down a fraction because it's not quite in line. So I'm just gonna make sure those calipers are out of the way so they're not gonna get squashed. I'm gonna let a little bit more gas out of that chamber. And there we are. Right, at this stage, we can now, I can actually almost just about get the, the calipers over the brake disc. There's, there's one side on. And there's the other side on. And now, remember the, the axle that goes through? And it came in from the left-hand side. So you're gonna start pushing that in. Ah, but there's a, a, another something else we must remember to put back in. And that is this little uh, ring here, which goes on, once again, on the ABS side. So I'm just gonna roll that back out again. So I'm gonna have to take the calipers off again. Pop that on top of there. Calipers are still over the discs. All right, and now I'm just gonna to need to lift it up just a fraction because it's not quite low enough. So squeeze my, my knees around it. Okay, and that's pushed all the way through. The nut that goes the other side, the bolt which goes on this side, we're going to put that in. I'm not going to go tight, we're just going to get it a little tight. We're not going to tighten anything up just yet, so I've got the axle through. I've done that kind of, I haven't gone tight because there's a torque setting for all this. And we're going to go through the book, but that is now on there. Before you turn the wheel, you want to get the calipers on properly. So I've just got them on finger tight, okay? And then the ABS as well. Pop that back on, don't forget about that. And once again, just finger tight because we are gonna get, there's, there's even a torque setting for that. And then the other side, brake caliper. Right, and now we can spin it with a hand. But these aren't tightened up, and also these little bolts on the very front, let me bring that over so you can see what I'm talking about. These are called pinch bolts, these things here. They also need tightening up, but we're not gonna tighten those up until we've got this torqued up properly. And you've got one the other side as well. Just there. When it comes to tightening up the bolts, you need to get the torque settings absolutely spot on, because you don't want your wheel coming off when you're doing 70 mile an hour down the road, do you? This, the main bolt going through, so according to the book here in, in my own user manual, user manual, yeah, the rider's manual for this for this bike, and make sure you, you read yours, because it might be different on your bike, depending on what year you've got, so it's not worth the gamble in taking it from what I'm saying on mine, but it's saying here, quick release axle in telescopic forks, which basically is this, that's a telescopic fork, that there, 30 newton meters. So you need a torque wrench for this. So you just about got the click, if you can hear that. So that's tight enough. And now the, the pinch bolts at the bottom, which on it and in the book is called clamping screw for quick release axle and telescopic fork. So I've got here 19 
newton meters. And the same this side. That's it. And then you have the ABS, so the wheel speed sensor to the fork leg. Sorry, it's a wheel speed sensor. I did this in the last video, I called it ABS. It's nothing to do with ABS at all. It's a wheel speed sensor on the fork leg. And that is also, that, that's eight, eight Newton meters. And now we've got the calipers themselves and they are 38 Newton meters. Look at all, all the adapters I've got on this, all because I haven't got the right size 13 mil socket to go on my torque wrench. There we go. And the other side. Right, so that is the front complete. So I'm just gonna jack it up a little bit more. <clears throat> so I've got good, good clearance on that rear wheel. Right, so as I mentioned before, it's probably a good idea to take the rear mug guard off. But if you're like me and can't be bothered, just jack the bike up a bit higher, slide the wheel underneath, you might have to Move the center stand out of the way a little bit, which I do. So I'm just getting the bolts in finger tight right now. Okay, so I've got the bike in gear, which means that I can talk this up no problem and I don't have to actually lower the bike down. But if you want to lower the bike down so it's, the tire's got some traction, so you can get the right torque settings, then fantastic. Right, so let's talk them up. So the rear wheel is 60 newton meters and you must tighten them up diagonally from each other. Okay, so that's all quite tight, but now we're gonna go for the torque. There we go, all done. Let's lower her back down. There we are, just go over it and check it all. And that's why I know I did all this. But just go over it mentally in your head that you know you definitely, you definitely tightened everything up. And obviously you don't need to touch the, the rear brake at all on GS when changing the wheel, because that's all on the single rear swing arm. Okay, jobs are good. And now uh, I need to get ready for the trip. So it's Friday today. We're not leaving until very early Wednesday morning. So I've got some time to prepare, but I've got customers coming in here to have work done to their bikes. And we've still got lots of stuff to get shipped out to you guys. But don't worry, whilst I'm away, there's someone here pick packing, as st new stocks coming in as you're buying. I'm still monitoring my emails every day. So I'll be managing the business whilst I'm on my travels. And as I said, there's someone here pick packing Denali and Inov stuff into boxes and getting it shipped out to you. There won't be any unnecessary delays apart from the obviously the obvious delays due to COVID-19 and supply chain issues that we're still still experiencing today. I never normally ask if you look at my, my videos I never ask people to subscribe and do you know what if you don't want to see the next video then please do not just subscribe. I'll tell you what unsubscribe if you want to you know see if I care. No, I, I do care, <laughs> I, I, I do care. It's, um, it's really great how the business is growing and the YouTube channel, how it's growing. I, I love the pace it's growing at, it's not growing too fast. And I really noticed the difference between 500 subscribers. So if I have 3,500 subscribers, then all of a sudden I've got 4,000 subscribers and, and that can take, I don't know, six, seven weeks for that, for that to happen. But I can really notice the difference in the, in the business and the stuff I'm selling. I'm not actually too bothered about the money that 
YouTube pay me for the videos that I do. It's a nice little bit of pin money, but it's the, it's the stuff that I'm putting my name to. It's the stuff that I'm investing in. I, I'm investing in products. You know, I've got stock on the shelves that I am obviously supplying to you guys. I believe in this stuff. I use it myself. And uh, that is how I've made a business out of this. So I'm not here trying to make money out of YouTube. Uh, I'm not saying I'm never going to have a Patreon page, but it's not really, it doesn't float my boat really. So uh, I've had a few people ask me to set up a Patreon page. Sorry, it's, it's, just, it's just not what I'm about. Hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe, thumbs up, comment, criticize whatever I've done here. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's all good. All right, ride safe guys. Stay safe behind bars. And I'll see you in the next video. And probably the next video you'll see will be me riding through the Pyrenees.